Students, I welcome you back on a beautiful summer rainy morning. I hope you are you are awake, you are woken up, and uh, you are enjoying the beautiful weather. But here we have more important things. Last time I gave you a 2011 paper. Okay, only a few of you attempted it. Uh, but I hope you will attempt this paper. This is today I am going to give you some guidance uh, regarding different types of writing. And also, I have a beautiful story written by a great writer, James Joyce. I won't be able to read it uh, in complete. Uh, the whole of the story, uh, but I guide you, I advise you to read the story uh, yourself. Uh, you can download the story. Okay. Uh, now please listen. As you already know, in your new format of the paper, you will be given one descriptive topic, two argumentative essays and to narrative topics and here we have some topics from the paper 2012 paper uh, first of all describe the two people who have helped you most during your extracurricular activities and the examiner has given you guidance and he says, remember you are describing the people and the help they have given you, not just the activities. Actually, the main purpose of guiding you is that always read the question carefully. And if there is some extra uh, guideline, do read it. Uh, he says, describe the two people. It means uh, you will be describing two people in your life, especially who have given you great help in extracurricular activities. Now, no doubt, such people can be uh, outside the school, maybe in your own family, your father, your mother, your brother, somebody else. Okay, uh, but uh, generally, what happens? It is always in the school or in the college that you are provided coaching, guidelines, help, and support by your tutors, your, by your coaches. By extracurricular activities, it can be any activity. It can be some sports. It can also be some uh, maybe uh, music. It can also be uh, speeches, debating, etc. But when you are describing people, you have to take into account, you have to describe not only their personalities, and you know, by personality, we mean everything. The physical appearance, the height, the weight, the hairstyle, uh, the uh, the dress as well, maybe speaking habits, talking habits, and the way somebody talks or uh, moves, the, the way somebody moves, runs, okay? Uh, for example, if it is your trainer, uh, maybe in some sports, generally what happens, such people are always on the go. They are running, they are trotting, they are in, uh, haste. They are always in haste because they themselves have to keep themselves very, very fit. Fit as a fiddle. Okay. Fit as a fiddle. Okay. Now, please. When you're describing the people, now, there are two people that you have to describe. But this does not mean that you will be writing only two paragraphs. 
No. It can be, for example, when you describe the first person, uh, it can be three paragraphs, two paragraphs, maybe more than three paragraphs. Uh, and you also have to focus on what help they have you provide. They have provided you. How they have been main motivational force in your achievements. You have to describe everything. Then, <clears throat> then you will describe the second person. Okay. So you have to describe two people and you have to tell everything how they have played such an important part in your extracurricular passion. Maybe it is sports, debates, poetry writing, or some other activity. Now when we come to topic number two, it is imaginative writing. Okay, so you, you will be writing what changes you would like to see take place in your country in the next five years. Now please, uh, the most important thing in such a topic is the tense. What tense you are going to use? And in the question, it has been made clear that you are going to use conditional tense would and the simple reason is because this is unreal past and in unreal past we will be using conditional tense would by unreal past we mean we imagine of a situation which actually does not exist therefore there is so much that you can write about for example, you know, we are living in a country where there are so many social, economic, cultural, uh, and other problems, okay? You can imagine that, for example, there are so many aspects of life where we are lacking, where we have problems, for example, there are educational, uh, you may say, issues. There are no good universities and the facilities provided to the students. They are not, uh, uh, you may say, uh, they're not equal for everybody. Not everybody has access to good education. Uh, then there are transport issues. Our transport is not especially uh, public transport is not very developed. Then uh, there are pollution problems. Wherever you go in Pakistan, you will see heaps and heaps of garbage lying and making the lives of people difficult. Uh, home to so many diseases and mosquitoes and flies, etc. Everything. Then there are uh, behavior issues. People are generally rude. If you go, you go to any place, you will see people, they are not kind, they are not polite, they are not civilized, they are not cultured. Then there are uh, food issues, okay? Then there are political issues. You see, our country doesn't have a well-developed political system. And people who have difference of opinion, uh, people are not of broad enough, generous enough, understanding enough to accept them. In, in a culture like Pakistan, you cannot express yourself openly, freely, without fear of being snapped or uh, insulted. Then there are, actually, there are layers of issues. Then there is, uh, uh, provincialism, then there is uh, uh, rel religious hardlining, or you may say religious fanat fanaticism, and it becomes really very difficult to count all the problems 
and what you are going to imagine, uh, you can focus on any one of them. That I imagine that after five years, my country will be a well-established, the democracy will be well-established, settled, people will learn. <clears throat> how to differ, how to express their difference of opinion, and people will be free to uh, vote to the candidates of their own choice. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but please listen, if you are going to write on a topic like this, uh, first of all, plan what are the areas where you want improvement, Okay, for example, if it is uh, cleanliness, then make it clear how you want to see the road, how you want to see the markets, other places, etc. <coughs> okay, now please, <coughs> the most favorite topics, and they are narrative topics, and when we come to them, uh, please, once again, I advise you again and again, please plan your story. And read the question carefully, always read the question carefully, only then you will be able to develop a story which is impressive, realistic, and, uh, and is relevant. Now, for example, when you come to the first topic, write a story which includes the sentence, I could not believe it was it. When my neighbor walked straight past me without saying a word. <clears throat> now listen please, what is the situation? The situation is of disbelief shock, the, the narrator, the first person narrator is in a state of disbelief, shock, because his neighbor has passed, ignoring him altogether. Generally, this is uh, an, unusual, uh, an unusual situation where somebody who is familiar with you, who knows you, who is close to you, just ignores you. And generally, what is the reaction? The reaction is of, there are two, there can be two types of reaction. One is surprise, shock, okay? And the other type of reaction can be uh, you are, annoyed, unhappy, okay? You are annoyed at the attitude of the person, okay? Now, what can be the situation? Okay, what can be the situation? It can be some problem with the neighbor. The neighbor is not in his usual frame of mind. Maybe he is undergoing through some emotional, personal problem. Okay? He is behaving unexpectedly like a stranger because 